on the Zero Hour. I, as always, am your host, Richard R.J. Escal. I've looked forward to speaking with my guest, uh, my next guest, for a very long time. I've been reading his work and uh, following his uh, thinking to the best of my ability for quite a long time. He His work on debt uh, had a, was a major factor and shaping the debt work of my late friend David Graeber, who's been on the who had been on the show a few times, and by extension was a major factor in shaping the Occupy movement. Uh, he is a controls uh, other country consists of. Well, the basic point is that America controls other countries financially more than militarily, and. Uh, it, I wrote the book uh, right after the United States went off gold in uh, 1971. I'd written chapters and published them before, but uh, the big part of the book is on uh, the balance of payments. Uh, uh, the entire balance of payments of the United States in the 50s, 1960s, part of the 70s is military in, in character. And uh, as a result of uh, the military spending uh, culminating in the Vietnam War, uh, the United States uh, was losing what it had uh, had given it all of its world power since uh, World War I. It had over 75% of the world's gold, and it was losing this power. And when uh, the United States was finally forced off gold uh, by the uh, military spending, the, the American government and the State Department and the White House thought this means uh, the end of American empire. And what I wrote was, well, actually, this strengthens America's hold over the rest of the world. Because in the 19, late 1960s and 70s, every uh, Friday, we'd look at the, uh, when I worked at the Chase Manhattan Bank as our balance of payments economist, we'd look at the uh, uh, Federal Reserve's gold holdings and how much gold would cover the dollar bills that you have in your pocket. Well, General de Gaulle was cashing in uh, the money that we would spend. Yeah. And uh, uh, buying a. The Gaulle was like, give me my gold, bitch. I don't trust this. Uh, so the, it's like you have to pay attention to France. France is not just a U.S. puppet. France is a thing. You guys got to understand. France is a thing. They clash with the U.S., you know? Vietnamese currency. The Vietnamese bank would send it to Paris. Paris would turn in these dollars uh, for gold. And America thought, without, without having gold, how are we going to finance our military spending? And without military spending, how can we support and force other countries to support our policies? Well, what I said was once they... Am I going on Zerker Royale? Yeah. I'm actually just waiting uh, till they start it. Because that's when I want to read in, when they actually start. Once central banks uh, are no longer able to use their dollars to buy gold, because America's uh, gone off the gold standard and won't sell it, all they have to buy our U.S. Treasury bills. And so all of a sudden, uh, when uh, France or Germany or even Russia or China would gain uh, dollars, all they could do was to keep them safe was to recycle them to the United States and to buy U.S. Treasury bonds, U.S. Treasury securities. And when they bought these securities, they were not only financing the balance of payments deficit, they were financing America's domestic budget deficit. So uh, leaving the rest of the world without an alternative to the dollar, uh, now that they closed gold, meant that other countries were tied in to keeping their savings by making loans to the United States that used this money to finance the military spending that encircled them all, uh, uh, and they, they were financing their own subservience. And uh, the um, immediately, uh, the, um, the largest... Uh, a buyer of the books were the CIA and the Defense Department. Uh, I was hired by uh, Herman Kahn at the Hudson Institute to go down to the White House and to explain to them how this was working. They didn't really intend to, to create an exploitative system, but uh, they said, "This is we're getting a free lunch from the rest of the world. Well, the reason we're do I decided to republish the uh, a, a new edition of Super Imperialism was to explain this is why Russia and China and Iran and Venezuela and other countries are going off the dollar standard because they're by avoiding dollars, they're no longer financing 
uh, the American military spending or the uh, financial takeover of their economies uh, that was buttressing world power uh, since World War II and, in fact, and since World War I. And Michael Hudson, I've wrestled with this question in my own mind a lot because you, know, you hear people use the rhetoric that uh, the American empire, the you know that we are uh, an imperial force in the world, and it seems what it feels like, what it seems like, is that it's an inver it, it is real, but it is an inversion of what people normally think of as a traditional empire, right? Because a, a traditional empire, you think someone goes Portuguese, British, somebody goes in France with force into Africa or, 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 or uh, other parts of the world, impose themselves by force and extract uh, the wealth. It almost seems now like we've inverted it that we, we had up until recently by being, in effect, the safest place for people to put their money once gold went away, that we were extracting the wealth and using, the, using it to build up military power instead of the other way around. Do you get what I'm driving at? Yes. Well, actually, America only uses uh, old colonial force in maybe 40 or 50 countries, uh, Honduras, uh, Latin America, uh, Africa. It, it, it's probably o only overthrow overthrown 40 governments. Right. <laughs> okay. I, right. Fair point. Uh, yeah. you, uh, that doesn't count, of course, the CIA assassination programs and the, co and, uh, the uh, 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 Ukraine uh, giving cookie, five, $5 billion worth of cookies uh, to uh, reinstall a neo-Nazi uh, regime in Ukraine, but the biggest thing, uh, who's America really going to exploit? Colonialism exploited less developed countries. Uh, England and Europe exploited Africa, Latin America. Uh, the genius of the American imperialism is it exploits the most uh, developed countries, the industrial countries. It, it exploits mainly Europe, uh, and it, would, it exploited Russia at, under Yeltsin, uh, when it uh, uh, essentially sent the neoliberals in there, and it would like to exploit China. Uh, and due to China, what it did uh, to Russia, the, uh, the, the neoliberal uh, ex exploitation. But the way you exploit developed countries, you're not going to have, um, you're right, you're not going to have a military invasion of Europe. Uh, all you have to do is, is uh, 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 assassinate the leaders as they did in, in Greece, uh, kill the uh, communists as they did in Italy, and uh, finance uh, uh, pro-Americans and the labor parties and the social democratic parties and make them essentially arms of uh, the State Department. Uh, that's not a very nice way of putting it, but it can control the European politics so that it can really exploit them financially. What it wants is their money. Uh, it doesn't want uh, the raw materials from Europe. It uh, doesn't even want their, uh, their industry uh, primarily. It wants the money that they can make by working in other countries. Uh, and it wants to prevent Europe from having its own currency to uh, make an alternative to the dollar. And it's true that the uh, Europeans do have the euro, but they can only create a few extra euros because they've uh, written their constitution that you can't uh, run a budget deficit of more than 3% of your GDP. Well, of course, that imposes austerity. So the United States essentially says to Europe and other industrial countries, uh, you have to impose austerity on your own economy. You have to prevent uh, a, uh, your uh, labor force from uh, increasing its uh, uh, revenue so that uh, the financial sector, the real estate sector, and the monopolies uh, can get the money and uh, let Americans buy a share of this and remit the interest and dividends and uh, economic rents uh, to the United States. So the mode of exploitation is that of it's a, a rentier economy. It's financial, it's monopolies, it's, no, it's uh, not military. There's, uh, there, there was the use of military force uh, after World War II, but uh, Europe is now so complacent that it's willing not to, uh, uh, not to grow and to essentially to uh, impose a kind of class war against labor there, uh, just as uh, we've imposed here. And you saw that when uh, the Euro uh, Europe fought uh, against Greece uh, uh, recently, uh, right. uh, five years ago, when it, it just bankrupted Greece uh, with, uh, and with debt leverage by the International Monetary Fund uh, and the World Bank. So my book, Super Imperialism, describes how the International Monetary Fund 
and the World Bank essentially impose austerity programs on other countries so that uh, nothing is left ex uh, for them to keep after uh, they do their exports, uh, they create, uh, uh, they create uh, foreign earnings, uh, nothing that they can do except send their uh, export earnings and industry uh, to the United States. And, and, and Michael Hudson, I'm, I'm really glad you mentioned Greece, uh, because it seems to me the way this empire works, it, it, it's invisible in most cases to most people. But uh, I can think of three examples offhand of, you know, when its interests are threatened, it's willing to become quite visible. And I wanted to ask you about that. Greece is one example where, if I recall correctly, uh, at one point the European Union actually stepped in with a troika of uh, basically financially based interests and, and uh, insisted that uh, the Greek uh, legislature uh, get prior approval before passing any laws, which, if I recall that correctly, is an overt act of, you know, you're basically vetoing democracy uh, for a country based on your own power leverage. We did the same thing to De Detroit, Michigan here in the United States, with appointing emergency managers uh, to control their debt and everything. Am I off base with this line of thinking here? Yes. Uh, it's not the Troika uh, that did it. Uh, the uh, European governments had agreed that uh, 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 Greece owed 50 uh, billion euros. Uh, the uh, Christine Lagarde of the IMF uh, uh, had a list of all of the tax avoidance that Greek uh, billionaires had put into Switzerland. So uh, they could have grabbed all of this. Europe uh, had reached an agreement with Greece that it was going to say, okay, we're going to uh, write down your debt and we're going to, we don't want to bankrupt you. Uh, we're going to let you go by. But uh, then uh, this uh, American, then you, you had uh, President Obama and the secretary uh, lay down the line to Europe. And uh, uh, first of all, you had Tim Geithner, uh, the bag man uh, for Wall Street, the Secretary of Treasury, uh, go there and say, uh, you cannot uh, you, uh, uh, write down the debts that Greece owed because the American uh, Wall Street companies have uh, written derivative guarantees so that if there's a debt write down, the Wall Street banks will have uh, who made a bet that Greece will pay, will have to pay uh, for uh, anybody who loses money. And then President Obama went to Europe and said, look, we're going to, uh, quite frankly, remove you from office. If you don't uh, insist that Greece pays all the money, uh, it's worth wrecking the Greece economy just so my clients, my largest campaign contributors are on Wall Street. And I have to serve my campaign contributors and you're not going to write down the debt one penny uh, because... Uh, uh, our Wall Street would lose. So it was Wall Street that told Europe what to do. Don't imagine that uh, vicious as the European bankers are, selfish and greedy as the uh, German and French bankers are, they still will, uh, were willing to do something to alleviate uh, the uh, bankruptcy of, of Greece and the uh, basic impoverishment of it uh, under... Uh, under the U.S. direction. And in my book, uh, Killing the Host, I give all of the documentation uh, on these, these trips. So uh, the insistence on austerity abroad, that other countries must impose austerity to prevent, uh, essentially, labor from uh, getting the fruits of its productivity, uh, and that uh, the financial sector should... Why was this need so condescending towards me? Because he doesn't have grassroots pressure from his audience to take me seriously. He doesn't feel like he has to take me seriously because his audience and his friends don't, right? So that's really like, I don't have this urgency behind me that's like on CNN where it's like, oh, I have to take where Haas is coming from seriously because discursively a bunch of other people are talking about it and Haas represents like, uh, a, a, a specific audience. Like, I don't represent enough people on the internet that's very clearly identifiable for him to take me seriously. I'm, like, making a lot of risks and wagering on something else. So, he don't have to take me seriously because I don't represent an existing, an established clan. Put it this way. Why would nobles... Think about all these nobles in the Middle Ages or whatever, right? They're not going to take seriously Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan doesn't represent an established house, right? It's only after Genghis Khan 
conquers everyone that they're going to take him seriously. But before then, that's just some random guy in Mongolia. They're not going to take him seriously. Who is he? Who does he represent, right? Should get all of the benefits from, from uh, productivity, specifically financial institutions controlled by the United States. So uh, bad as Europe is, uh, it's, it's doing what America tells it to do. And, uh, you know, people on Wall Street, as you well know, love to talk about moral hazard when it comes to who providing uh, access to funds in certain ways to working people. But it seems that, you know, when the, when the crisis happened in Greece, I got a little curious about the underwriting of some of these loans. And I looked at them and they were frankly poor quality. They were not the ones, they, 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 there was no real due diligence. There was no, Greece has a problem with inability to collect taxes that they didn't weigh in. There were other considerations they didn't make. They, it seemed like at some point they had a compliant Greek uh, government that, uh, oh, you know, helped borrow money. It was not really thinking about worker, working people's interests and so on. And yet the moral hazard stops here when it comes to, you know, I didn't see anybody say, well, you know, you guys were careless with these loans. You're going to have to take them. On, I'm just going to really quickly send someone a message to come on the show. Don. Turned amazing for certain kinds of pizzas. But for this type of pizza, you want it crispy, a little doughier. You want it kind of like a focaccia. We're going to have three and a half cups of all the on the show down this Friday. Uh, instant Who's going to be on it? One infrared. packet. So we don't have Cause to bloom it. Two tablespoons of salt. Do I like Detroit Detroit style pizza? I mean, I kind I don't prefer it. I mean, I know I'm from Michigan, but like, I prefer it. Mafia Jinx will come with you. Do let me talk to her. Let me talk to my queen, and I'll let you know. What different pizzas for different occasions? Now listen, Chicago style pizza. Oh my god! Like, okay. I don't prefer it, all right? Hello. Hi, everybody. Lucas, thank you so much for the five gifted subs, by the way. Um, let me open up my stuff. I, I haven't even opened up Chatterino yet. <laughs> Listen, everybody, I was, I was ready to stream earlier, but then I decided I wanted to go eat some In-N-Out, so I did that. And now I'm back from eating in and out. So yeah, that's um, that's what I did today. That was like the highlight of my day was going to go get in and out. Uh, but yeah, anyways, thank you so much, Lucas, again for the five gifted. Oh my god! All my all the gifted subs and everybody who subscribes normally. I know it's last minute shit. I have to get these people for Friday. So I normally don't stream on Wednesdays, but I really didn't have anything else to do, so here I am. Let me go to the politics section. Oh. I tried I tried this um They got rid of it? This energy drink that Hassan gets, and they it's actually got really it. good. Oh you know what's crazy too is it's um I need some right wingers. I need some right wingers. Martinez perspective, let him know. I don't know how to contact him. I don't know how to contact that guy. Huh, let me see this is. Oh man, I just fucking took a, a major haircut on this or man, let the Greek people run their country. Yahya is right wing. We need more like famous people. We need streamers and shit. Isn't that a fair? Can we do another topic. I feel like the topic on third parties is so esoteric and RP would accept. Sure. Criticism of what's going on here? Sure. When uh, Greece joined the European Union, uh, there were certain. Pre uh oh, Laura Southern. I don't know if I want to bring her on. It'll cause too much of like an issue financial preconditions of solvency. Uh, the Greek government hired Goldman Sachs, which uh, presented uh, falsified uh, economic accounts to make it appear as if the Greek government was uh, solvent, when actually it wasn't solvent. Yeah, Rob Moore is always welcome. 
but we need more conservatives too, just than him. Uh, the European, the financial press knew this. They knew that Goldman Sachs had faked the accounts, uh, but uh, they didn't care because they know that, Amer that uh, the American government will bail them out. If you make a losing bet uh, and you're a big campaign contributor, you go to your representative or you, you would go to the Obama administration and say, we don't want to lose $100. Uh, will you bankrupt this country and cause it a bit? cost it a billion dollars just so we don't lose a hundred dollars. And Obama every single time said yes. Uh, so uh, you're, th this was really the turning point. It was 2000. Laura Southern. Yeah, I'll, I'll see. Nine and 10. Stefan Molyneux, no thanks. Uh, he won't come and he's probably banned from everything. Under Obama and Geithner that the whole financial lock-in of the world economy uh, occurred to uh, es essentially create a, a more usurious, exploitative financial system than uh, had ever been in place before. And he and the Obama administration used the World Bank and the IMF as the uh, uh, sort of the bad guys in all this, whereas they were really arms of uh, U.S. foreign policy and uh, super imperialism shows how they were created in 1944 oh, or 1945. Hold on, give me one sec. 